Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to mold 82. We have a small mold this week with two holes. So I pour them up, tip out the excess, you know the drill, hopefully by now, or maybe this is your first video that you're watching and in that case, welcome. Here are some molds I bought and we're finding out what's inside each of them. So this week I thought I might do this video a little bit differently just to mix it up. You know, we've been doing this for a while, like 82 of them now. Before I tell you how we're going to mix them up, let's see what's inside this mold, right? So we open it up and we've got a set of two little squirrels holding acorns and they are so delightful. They are very textured, which was actually made it a little bit trickier to plan what I want to do with them because technically what you would do is t paint these like a natural squirrel but I don't do natural we're not doing natural we want to do something creative and fun okay natural is fun natural is fun I just like to get a bit more imaginative with these pieces anyway I trim off those bases and here is the mold if you're looking for the mold itself if you're doing molds and want to make them this video is going to be different because I'm not speeding any of the shots up I usually speed the shots up because I've already done it once and I assume that you know that's boring but last week someone made a very valuable comment and said don't underestimate the value of being able to watch this and watch the process and watch it in real time. So I really wanted to sort of, I guess, like honor that this week and show you some shots. I'm of course gonna clip them together like I usually do, but not speed them up so you can see how the real time and how it does take a really long time. And this is only seeing sort of like one sort of section of it too. Not the boring bits where I'm dipping my paintbrush in, <laughs> in the paint a dozen times and cleaning my brush and cleaning the space. So I thought it would be nice this week I'm also going to tell you what I'm painting this week and then the rest of the video will be a little bit more quiet. I'm not going to talk as much this week and just enjoy the process. So I had a few ideas for this week's piece. I didn't want to paint it just plain natural squirrel like. I thought about the squirrel in Spongebob but then I was like the style doesn't lend itself to that cartoony vibe and I also really wanted to try this sort of librarian academia style because someone has suggested I try and do a brownie dark academia so this isn't quite dark academia but it is my sort of interpretation on it by using these little motifs so on these pieces I'm painting some little letters a little pocket watch a cup of tea a tea bag keys mushrooms little leaves a whole bunch of little motifs as well as some little books so enjoy the process and I will chime back in to tell you the next step of the process but just enjoy the little motive painting for the time being.
So looking at these pieces, they did feel a bit flat. So I wasn't really sure whether I should antique them all or to not antique them all and how all the colors were gonna pop because I did mix all of the colors on this week's piece, which means they might not come out exactly how I intend them to come out because I haven't trialed them before. So what I did is I know that 50% of you will like them antiqued and 50% won't. So I'm doing 50-50. And then the other thing I'm doing is trialing out some different glazes to see how they vary. Uh, when I say different glazes, I'm trying out two different glazes. I'm trying out my usual clear glaze and also this low sheen glaze, but I'm doing one coat on one set of squirrels and then two coats of low sheen on another set just to see how that sheen varies depending on the coatage. And also, <laughs> I just realized I haven't forgot to mention this blue bar where I dropped the whole thing in. It was fine. I wiped off the bottom. It got a good dunking. I just sent it straight in the kiln. It was fine. Anyway, I did that to see what the sheen looks like and to see pretty much just variation in color depending on what firing you do just for your interest and also mine so i popped them in the kiln i popped the low sheen glazes on top the first coat went in first and then the second coat went in second so that i remembered and took that mental note i popped them in overnight and here is the finished result they look so fun. I definitely miss the color on these. I understand this aesthetic and I really appreciate it. But for me, I just was itching to put so much more color and so much more vibrancy on them. But they kind of suit like a little desk of filled notes or like a little bookshelf. I think that they are so sweet. I really prefer the antiquing. I was actually really unsure about the antiquing when I was putting it on. I was like, what if I'm taking away from those illustrations? But they actually look fantastic. You can still see those illustrations. It just kind of gives it this sort of moody feel rather than that real like popping. It kind of makes it look like it's part of the fur rather than these weird little objects that are just sitting on the fur. I think that the glaze looks great as well. You can see that it makes the colors a lot more vibrant, whereas with the unglazed, they look a lot more muted. And I think I kind of like the muted this time. I usually don't go for unglazed, but because of the style of these pieces, I feel like the, the muted unglazed pieces are great. This here is the first coat of low sheen and then we've got the second coat and to the untrained eye it's really hard to see the difference and even through camera it was really hard to show you that there was a slight difference so we've got the unglazed then we've got one coat of low sheen two coats of low sheen and then the usual gloss glaze if you look at how much those glazes are reflecting the light you can see that there is a difference it's just very very subtle i actually think out of all of these the first coat of low sheen glaze is my favorite. On the bottle, it said to do two coats, but I actually really like just one coat to just give it this subtle sheen without it being too reflective and too glossy. I also noticed that depending on how many coats and how glossy it was, it changed the vibrancy of the color as well. So it was a really cool experiment to try. Let me know what you think of this mold in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this week's reveal. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me out so much. And here is your sneak peek for the next reveal.